well. We're doing something a bit different this morning. I thought we'd have to do some uh, rabbit pictures. Now, they're a bit of a test of your field craft of rabbits. Not something you see a lot of photographs of, to be honest. We'll, uh, we'll have a look round. I'm just sat at Edge Row, actually. I should have probably done this introduction before we uh, before we got set up. But I've, I've been here maybe five minutes, and there's already two two out. So I've been filming them a bit. So what we'll do, we'll um, we'll go through the setup, what to look for, how we can make our job a bit easier, and see if we can get some uh, some pictures of Bugs Bunny. Corona cut, had to do it. No barbers open, so a bit of a DIY job. Anyway, right, like I said, we're out this morning photographing uh, rabbits. The tricky, the tricky things, these rabbits, they're, um, yeah, they're not easy to get close to. You think about it though, everything wants to eat a rabbit. Buzzards, eagles, storks, weasels, human beings, the ferrets, dogs are always chasing them, so they are, they are proper twitchy, they're super tuned in, so they're a good subject to practice. Um, you know, if you're just getting into wildlife photography, you know, people they're mad about photographing foxes and badgers and deer, you know, big stuff, And um, <clears throat> but as a starting point, photographing rabbits, it's, uh, yeah, it's good, it, it really hones you, your field craft, and that's what I, I think a lot of it's about. It's about field craft, you know, don't be so quick to just bang a, a hide up and sit in it. You know, it's a real skill to be able to see your subject, think about the environment that they're in and uh, try and get as close as you can. Now this particular spot, it's um, <clears throat> a big big field, big open field, loads of edges around it. Now th this particular edge, there's a bit of a ditch in it. So I spotted it a couple of nights ago, I was out walking the dogs and um, it was early evening and there were loads of rabbits coming out at edge rows. I had a bit of a look round and there's, there's warrens everywhere so I thought it would be a good good place to come and have a do one morning. <clears throat> so we're here this morning. Just a few considerations really to think about. You know, I mean, I, the sun has gone a bit, a bit overcast now but the sun was coming over that way a massive consideration with rabbits as well is the wind direction. Same with anything really, Same, you know, deer, foxes. If they, if they smell you, they're away. You know, you haven't got a chance. So, massive consideration is think about what direction the wind's blowing. You know, you want it blowing into your face, if you will. Don't You don't want your scent being cast onto, onto the rabbits. So, that's your first consideration and obviously your concealment stuff get, uh, get as cammed up as you can so once you've sussed out your wind direction and where you're going to photograph them from you know get your get a decent camo set up on get as low down as you can but be mindful as well I mean of the height of the grass I mean I, I've, I've got my set up here and I'm probably I don't know maybe 18 inches off the ground but uh, this particular location, it's, it's just ryegrass in the field. Now down the side of the hedgerow, it's a bit shorter. But you don't want to get too low down because there's a lot of young rabbits at the moment and they're not the biggest thing in the world. So you need to be at a decent height so that you can actually see them and that they're not going to be obscured. It's nice to get a bit of grass in the foreground you know, when you're shooting, you know, with a quite an open aperture, you can get that nice diffused foreground, and you can also get the the diffused background as well. So just have a have a play around with it. Another thing, footwear. Footwear is uh, not something people really consider, to be honest. Now I've I've got a pair of um, walking boots on, but they're a really lightweight walking boot. I'll put a link in the uh, in the description. But they're made by a company called Grisport, they're Italian and uh, they're really soft leather but it's, it's also down to the sole as well. You don't want a bloody big heavy pair of 
bringing Frankenstein boots on, do you? You need to be able to feel what's underneath your feet. So if you, you know, if you step on a twig or a branch, you be able, you can feel it before you put your full pressure on it. If you're walking and you step on it on a big branch or a twig and it snaps, it's like a gunshot going off because these say they're, they're that tuned in and they'll be away before you know it, probably before you've even seen them. So consider either a really lightweight pair of boots or another good idea is a, a dark pair of trainers. Now, when you're out in the morning, obviously there's loads of dew on grass, your feet are going to get wet through, but get yourself a pair of dry socks. I've, I've got some sealskin dry socks. Get them on, bang your trainers on, and it don't matter about your, your footwear getting wet because your feet are dry, aren't they? So that's just another thing. And, and get out there as well. You know, don't be so keen to, if you find a new location, don't be so keen to grab your camera and just get off there and, and start firing away. Time spent out in the field, just observing. You know, just take your binoculars, bit of camo gear on, and go and sit there for a couple of hours. You know, just sit in edge row, and, what, and you'll be amazed what, what you see knocking about. You know, you'll see barn owls and little owls and, you know, foxes traipsing over. And, and if you, you know, you observe stuff and watch, and... You know, you might see a fox going on a regular route, so you can you can maybe find out where its earth is. Um, but that's that's something people don't really do a lot of. I, I find they they're too keen to grab the camera, and then you know you get disappointed. But time spent out in the field, observing and watching, and you know logging stuff. Take a little notepad. You know, take take some notes, times, and um, you know when you've seen stuff, what the weather conditions are like and you'll build up a picture of the location and it'll just stand you in good stead when you do eventually decide, right, I'm going to take camera now and, um, you know, get behind, the, get behind the lens, if you will and all that time spent in the field uh, observing and um, seeing what's about it'll stand you in good stead So gear I brought out with me this morning, I've just, um, like I said in my me, in me film that I did about scouting new locations, I've, uh, I've got my got me foul raven bag, and I've just chucked a pair of binoculars in, my camo gear, uh, a couple of scrim, scrim scarves, and then my me, me camera. And I've actually, I've got a new, um, I've got a new tripod head. Um, I saw it. Well, there's a few few photographers on YouTube who've got this one. It's the uh, Manfrotto. The thing. I mean, I, I have a carbon gimbal and it's fantastic. It's brilliant. But the thing is, when you when you um, when you're making these films for YouTube, 
obviously you want some nice fluid movements with your filming and as good as the gimbals are they're um, they're not the best for well they're not designed for for videoing so you want that nice fluid movement you know no no jerk jerky movements so I think it were uh, well I know it, it were Morton Hilmer that uh, that kind of suggested it and there's a few others the usual suspects they've got them now so yeah it's uh, so far I'm really impressed with it it's fantastic you know when you, you see these rabbits and they're running across the field and you want to follow them and track them it's uh, it's ideal so I'll probably end up doing a review well I'll do a, a comparison between the gimbal and um, and this this Manfrotto video and it's it's big like but um, for this job it's absolutely perfect you can't be swapping between a gimbal head and a, a video head you know it's, it's just not practical so but up to now it's uh, it's done the job all right this morning so so we've we've had probably had an hour here got some pretty good footage some nice stills now just over over the field there there's a big fallen oak tree and there's some rabbits around there as well so I'm gonna I'm gonna change location now I'm gonna have a, a sit over there and see if uh, see if we can get a bit more footage all right see you in a bit to do I've had to uh, I've had to do a big loop we're going now to this other location this uh, this tree root I run about it's like a big uprooted oak tree it's where the, uh, the rabbits have they met a warren around there so I've had to do a big loop because of the uh, the way the wind's blowing I don't want to scare them off because they will they'll smell you a bloody mile away they're a nightmare so that's just a, that's a massive consideration is uh, is the wind direction so get that in your favor and I've also I've got this bank in here, I'll just show you. So uh, that's going to give me a little bit of bit of shielding. Once I get up on top I can get low down and we can try and creep up on them. about half an hour at this uh, this second location the one with a big oak tree we've not uh, we haven't seen out yet so weather's turned a bit now it's uh, started to rain which is unusual after all brilliant weather we've had so I could have edited it like and uh, said you know we had a cracking do at this second spot but you know there's no point is there that's that's the thing with wildlife photography you know you can go out one day and you can you can see everything you want to see and get up shots but another time you know you, you go out and uh, you don't get what you're after but this you know first thing down that uh, down that edge row that we went down it was fantastic there we had we must have had eight or nine out at one time so I got some some half decent footage uh, second one's not worked out the other night when I came past there were uh, there were a good few and um, I had my little camera on me and I managed to get a few snaps so I put them on but uh, you know that's one for another day, isn't it? But uh, yeah, rabbits. 
get out. I don't see loads of people taking photos of rabbits, but they're dead good for, um, you know, for, for just for practicing really. You know, practicing your field craft and uh, you know trying to trying to get close to uh, to your subject. You know, that there's those major considerations. So you know, your your basic field craft, your your wind direction, your concealment. Um, clothing that you wear, like I said, get some you know footwear that you can feel the ground, and because uh, they are they well tuned in these bunnies. So, thanks for watching. Uh, give us a thumbs up, maybe subscribe if you fancy it, and uh, and share it, whatever. But uh, brilliant! Thanks for your support. We're we're creeping up there. We're near, we're getting towards a thousand subscribers, which is absolutely unbelievable. I never thought I'd get that many. So we'll keep posting the videos. Uh, hope you're learning stuff. You know, I've, uh, I'm not a pro photographer by any stretch, but uh, hopefully I can pass on a few tips and uh, a few hints, and you know, you might benefit from them. So from me, thanks very much for watching. Stay safe, and we'll see you out there.